toe is not on. Um, tonight, this is being brought to you by LW Pharmacy School. This is the fourth part of our IV crash course. Um, and we are going to talk about sterile and non-sterile compounding tonight. This has been a very big, I guess, concern or people have been needing tips and um, different, you know, type of help in regards to sterile and non-sterile compounding. So tonight you're going to get that help. If you are um, a part of our channel or if you have been watching our uh, YouTube and it has been helping you, please give our YouTube channel a thumbs up. Please make sure that you subscribe to our channel and that um, you ring the bell for notifications. If you follow us on Facebook, you want to give us a thumbs up there, like our channel or uh, page on Facebook as well. And we're going to jump right into it tonight. Um, please make sure that your cameras and your mic is not on. We will be uh, recording and this will post onto our YouTube page at one o'clock Central Standard Time on Wednesday. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and jump into it. So we're gonna start, we're gonna dive right into aseptic technique. Aseptic technique begins with thoroughly washing the hands and arms up to the elbow, which is followed by putting on gloves and a gown if necessary. Aseptic technique is something that is genu genuinely done um, in the hospital setting or any type of compounding setting where you are doing sterile compounding. Um, however, it has also been done when you're doing non-sterile compounding. So uh, remember when you are washing your hands, one of the things I learned in school when you're washing your hands is to say your ABCs, okay? Um, and when you were doing the hand wash, you wanna say your ABCs, remember to dry your arms, uh, wash all the way up into your elbows, and then you also wanna make sure that you dry your hands um, with a lint-free paper towel, okay? Aseptic technique has been used in the pharmacy to keep contamination from occurring from uh, going to one product to the next. So it's really important, especially when you're doing sterile, that you are uh, using aseptic technique. If you are in the pharmacy and you're going to be compounding sterile uh, medications like IV bags, or if you're going to be compounding um, maybe syringes, uh, you want to make sure that you do not have acrylic nails. This is for my ladies. No acrylic nails, no makeup and sterile uh, compounding, right? No fake eyelashes, even though we love our eyelashes. Um, none of those things are allowed because it could be a contamination. Just think about if an eyelash fall off or if, you know, your fingernail polish chips in, you know, while you're compounding. So there's no acrylic nails, no, uh, no, no acrylic nails like this. You don't, you also don't want to have any type of, hi, Courtney, guys, make sure you turn off your, um, long time no see. I'm going to cut off the videos for everybody because remember, we are recording and we do not want your uh, video or your sound to come through on our recording. Um, also, you want to make sure no fingernail polish is on because fingernail polish can chip while you are compounding. And when we are compounding sterile compounds or any type of sterile medication, we do not want anything chipping off into the medication that we, uh, for the patients, right? Uh, contaminations. What are possible contaminations when we're compounding? Um, in this room here, this is like the clean room. So this is where they're doing the compounding for the IVs, right? And so you'll see all of these uh, laminar flow hoods, and all of these are horizontal flow hoods, which means that the air blows towards the technician, right? If it's horizontal, that means the air is going towards us. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but contamination is anything that is clothing, hands, nose, mouth, okay? Uh, when you are compounding in a sterile environment, you also are going to have your face mask on uh, that covers up the mouth, and you'll have a face mask on that cover up the nose. So it'll go from here to the bottom, okay? From the tip to here. Uh, if you are a male with a beard, you're also going to have on a beard cover because we don't want beard hair fall falling off into our compound, right? Um, we don't want anything coming out the nose. We don't want anything coming out the mouth to contaminate what you're compounding. Uh, environmental contaminants would include dust and airborne particles. So that's why we compound inside of this IV or inside of the laminar flow hood to make sure that nothing gets inside of our IV. IV. Remember that sterile and aseptic mean the same thing. It just means that it is free from biological contamination. Sterile and aseptic means the same thing. 
free from biological contamination. Cross-contamination happens um, if a needle in a syringe is, pro is improperly used or if your work area are not properly cleaned between stations or between sessions. So if you have used a syringe to compound maybe amoxicillin and then you bring that syringe back to compound azithromycin, now you have done some cross-contamination, right? Or if you're using the same needle, Remember that syringes and needles are only good for one time, one time use. We do not use them over and over. The only time we will reuse a syringe is if it's a glass syringe. And glass syringes are used for individuals who are allergic to plastic. Okay, so we definitely don't want to use syringes more than one time because we want to make sure that um, we are not contaminating or doing any type of cross contamination. If you have just joined us, please drop in the chat where you are calling or joining in from. Please list your city and state uh, because we would like to know where you are and where you are chiming in from tonight, okay? Remember, we bring you a free, fresh, free crash course every second Monday of the month. A free crash course every second Monday of the month. Uh, LW Pharmacy School hosts a free crash course. If you are joining us, please make sure you drop your city and state in the chat. We would love to know where you're calling from or where you're joining us from tonight. Uh, laminar flow hoods. When you think about a laminar flow hood, I want you to remember that all parenteral and ophthalmic medications are prepared in a laminar flow hood, okay? Um, when you think about a laminar flow hood, remember that um, that is where ophthalmic and uh oh, okay. That is where parenteral and ophthalmic medications are prepared. Um, injectable drugs and other sterile products must be made in a clean room under a laminar flow hood. Injectable drugs and other sterile products must be made in a clean room under a laminar flow hood. Eye drops are considered to be sterile, right? Injectable drugs that are going straight into the vein must be made in a clean room under a laminar flow hood. Laminar flow hoods are to be recertified every six months. Every six months, a laminar flow hood needs to be recertified. Routine cleaning of all hoods includes cleaning all work surfaces and free filters. So um, we always make sure we clean the laminar flow hood 30 minutes before we start to compound, and we make sure we clean it after we finish compound. Okay, now uh, when you get ready to compound, you want your laminar flow hood to run 30 minutes before you compound. 30 minutes before you compound, and you wanna make sure that you clean your flow hood before you start your compounding. You also wanna make sure you clean the flow hood once you are done, okay? Um, typically, the laminar flow hood recertifications are done by an independent contractor. When they do that, all inspections must be kept on file. All inspections must be kept on file, okay? Uh, we got New London, Connecticut in the house tonight. We have Memphis here, Longview is here. We have somebody calling all the way from Illinois. If you are in this live tonight, please drop where you are joining us from in the chat. We would love to shout you out um, and to show your city and state some love. I'm in Houston, Texas, and so, we are uh, excited to have you all joining us from all around the country. Um, the different types of hoods that we have, okay? So we have two types of hood. One hood is horizontal, one hood is vertical, okay? One is horizontal, one is vertical. Now we're gonna talk about the horizontal flow hood. And if you look here at the top, I have the horizontal flow hood and it's showing the way that the air blows. So a horizontal flow hood has it to where the air blows towards you, okay? And remember tonight, guys, I'm gonna shut your cameras off because again, this will be recorded and added to YouTube and I would hate for you all. We don't wanna get your, uh, your videos and all of that inside of, the, um, inside of the, uh, the recording. So make sure that your videos is off and your um, mic is muted. So when, we're re when we are compounding in a horizontal flow hood, the air is gonna blow towards us. What we compound in there is parenteral medication or sterile product, okay? Um, outside of the airflow, the way that the air flows in the horizontal, it, it flows outside and then back into the hood, okay? 
Um, you will notice here we have, and okay, thanks for joining us tonight. And we are wishing you guys best of luck. You're doing the right thing. Don't doubt yourself. Um, oh, we got a question.